Hey everybody, Fifth Horseman here. Playing more Kerbal Space Program, and we are launching a ship. Ideally, up into the far reaches of space. This is the SOI Lever, <laughs> is what I'm calling this ship. His entire job is to leave Kerbin's SOI and ideally confirm, first of all, uh, get some science back from it. And second of all, and, and more importantly, I forgot to, to turn off the roll on these guys. <laughs> and I'm also now going faster than I should. I should bring up the far window here. This thing should be quite uh, aerodynamically sound. I just am flying it poorly. Oh, my word. But uh, yeah, we're, we're we're basically this is this is testing the uh, the capabilities of these rockets to uh, to communicate with our communications network from far away. Um, that's the entire goal of this mission. Um, and while we're doing that, I'm going to try to get um, science data from. Uh, Outside of Kerbin's SOI, just to just to see what happens, sort of thing. Um, so I'm just basically I'm burning up here. I'm doing this very poor trajectory. But now that we're out of the thicker part of the atmosphere, I'm just making sure this stays nominal. Um, I'm actually going to just keep burning uh, because we don't care. All we care about is getting out of Kerbin's SOI. But I would like to burn, I would like to do a lot of my burning sideways, but I'm not going to blow up my ship to do it. And I think I'm going to toss the fairings, and you can see the tiny little ship under here. There it is. Nothing special about it. There we go, I'm going to hit the action group 1, which is going to extend our antennae. Very nice. And as soon as this is over... There we go, now we are going to aim this, we are going to target this at Kerbin, or Mission Control. We'll target this at Mission Control. And then we're basically now just burning our burning our apoapsis up. We currently have connectivity directly to Mission Control, but we also have it to all of these things. But eventually this ship is going to be so high up that it's not going to, the Communitron uh, 8888 is not going to work. And when that occurs, when that time happens, he's going to uh, be relying on his dish. And I, we basically haven't tested the dishes yet. I want to see how those work. Um, also, at some point, we're going to be able to do uh, Mystery Go. I think I actually turned this off. I did. So let's turn these on. And ideally, we're going to get we're going to get a chance to do Mystery Go and Science Junior contracts. From extra extra Kerbin space here, but we're just gonna we're just gonna burn our apoapsis up until it leaves Kerbin's sphere of influence. Oh, that would that would actually been a cool way to do it, but oh well. Okay, boom, leaving Kerbin's sphere of influence. Uh, let's see, the sun is over here, so we want to turn sideways. Looks like we are getting enough uh, solar power, which is nice. We don't need far anymore. Nice little compact ship. Nothing wrong with it. If I have to take two readings from extra solar space, I will. Or extra carbon space. I keep calling it extra solar space. There goes Moon. See you later. There's Minmus off in the distance there. He's really leaving in 50-some days? And actually, here it says he's not leaving. Uh, let's actually slow down time. Let's actually look at this thing here. Yeah, his orbit, it actually says he's not going to leave Kerbin's Sphere of Influence anymore. So let's aim him prograde. We don't have control over him. Why don't we have control over him? Now he's aim his his dish is looking at Kerbin. I don't see a cone. I thought that they show a cone in this thing when you uh, do this. Um, but yeah, we have no control over this guy. So we're just gonna wait until he gets all the way out to. Oh, there he goes. 
but we still don't have control over him. And he has gone into interplanetary space in a couple seconds here. <laughs> Just SOI craziness. He is now in interplanetary space, and we have no control over him. So he is essentially dead and useless. Um, this is potentially a problem. Okay, we are back. We are launching the same ship we had, exactly the same ship we had before. It is heading out into space, and uh, I found out what the problem was. I Remote tech, I don't know anything about it, so oh, I should probably start my gravity turn. Um, I'm actually going to turn off SAS, because if I do my gravity turn right, this guy goes pretty well. Um... But, uh, yeah, this is, this is the kind of rocket you're supposed to launch in far. So, so <laughs> it does a fairly decent gravity turn as long as you, as long as you do it right. Um, but, uh, yeah, the, the, he's actually not doing a great gravity turn, probably because I did it, I did it too late. Um, the problem was, is I wasn't aiming at Kerbin, I was aiming at Kerbal Space Center. For those of you who have thought about doing remote tech, perhaps because you're watching me do it, you're like, that looks fun. Um... Come on, stupid. Stay over that way. Uh, the trick is, if you are aiming at a thing, you don't get the cone. It just talks to that thing and it ignores everything else. If you aim at a planet, I didn't see the cone, because I, I actually tested this uh, last night. It's been like 24 hours since I recorded last. Um, if you don't see the cone, uh, or you don't see the cone, but the communication works, at least. Uh, at least with the dish I'm using. Uh, yeah, in order to, to talk to anything, though, you have to aim at a planet, and then it talks to the things that happen to be in the line of sight on the way to that planet, is the way this, this whole sh thing works. Um, I'm basically, uh, doing the same mission again. I'm not gonna make you watch the whole thing, but I am gonna make you watch part of it, because I'm gonna talk a little bit. Um, I dropped two mods. One of them is Debris Refund. Um, I don't think it's necessary. Uh, and it has nothing to do with Debris Refund. It's a great mod. There's nothing wrong with it. If you want that kind of thing, I just don't want that kind of thing. I, I don't need the money, is the is the short of it. Uh, I am going to ditch my fairings, and I'm going to hit one. Because I have to get I have to get these antennae working before I drop this, because the, uh, the talk to the... The, the little dinky antenna is right here. So when it when when this thing le when this thing gets ditched, I am out of uh, I'm out of talkiness. <laughs> so I have to I have to ditch that before I ditch this. So here goes this rocket, and we are on our way. We are going to now aim this thing at Kerbin or yeah at. Moho Eve Kerbin. There it is. <laughs> oh, I see. Because they're, they're inter interior of sun. Looks like they're like interior of Moho, but I guess it's just that Moho doesn't have that. And we're in space. And we are perpendicular to the sun, which is nice. Um, and this is basically the same the same mission we had before. Um, I'm just burning up my my apoapsis until he gets out into space. It's actually going to take a second, so I might as well I might as well keep it here. Here's this guy; he's dead. Um, I also, though, in addition to to dropping debris refund, I have dropped fine print, uh, which kind of makes me sad because I really like the fine print mod. Um, the problem is I'm going to actually the chances of us hitting moon are pretty low, but I'm just going to see if it happens here, just for fun. So hold on just a second, and I'll, then I'll tell you why I dropped fine print. Uh, if we get a moon encounter... Looks like no. There we go. We are leaving the Sphere of Influence in 11 days. So there you go. And then, see here, you're going to see as, as I accelerate time... He's got a direct line to Kerbal Space Center. That's what that yellow thing is. And I think that's that's the antenna connection, is to Kerbal Space Center. And then as he gets farther away, we're going to see some orange ones, which I think is the dish connection. There, there's orange lines. Those are dish connections to... Uh, to those guys. And once we get far enough away from Kerbal Space Center that we can't talk to it directly anymore or it goes on the other side 
There, it's on the other side now. Now, the, the orange ones are all potential connections, I think. And then the yellow one is the actual connection to Kerbal Space Center, is the way that thing works. Uh, meanwhile, we've got some we've got some readings to take. I'm kind of surprised that we haven't give, been given the option. See, we yeah, we have the option to take these readings. So I'm going to keep this data high over Kerbin, and I'm going to do a goo reading high over Kerbin. And I don't know actually why I'm keeping the data now because I just realized I, I want to transmit the data. So let's go ahead and uh, review this data, and we're going to transmit this one, and we're going to actually we're going to watch our electric charge here because I don't know how this is all working. This is all part of the test here. So we're going to uh, transmit this material study. And it should give us 0.8 science. <laughs> and we use up some of our electric charge, and we get the 0.8 science. So now we're going to review this data. And it uses two little diggy-daggies, and then it's done. So now, uh, I don't know why uh, this thing isn't telling me, though. They're not even enabled. That's why. I, tur I turned off their enabledness. Because I didn't want... Uh, I, I, I was having... When I was orbiting Kerbin, it was it was like every five seconds it was like, hey, you got a you got a thing to do, you got a thing to do, you got a thing to do. So okay, there. Now it'll actually alert me when I when I have these to do. So now it's time to leave the Kerbin sphere of influence. In eleven days. So we're just gonna we're just gonna fast forward and are you serious? Okay, I was like, are you serious? We just lost. <laughs> I guess I was just going too fast. So. uh... Although the thing is red, which is kind of scary. I don't know why it's red. Ah, cause, just because we were in time warp. Okay. Okay, I think we're here now. So let's go. Hurry while it's still telling me it's okay. And we're going to transmit this data from space high over the sun for 8.8 .8 science. Look at that. And then we're going to transmit the data for this high over the sun, which is 9.9 .9 science. Transmit that data. There you go. That's our first huge data for a long time. And now this guy is space junk. Okay, now we're ready for the Mars launch. It's uh, basically the same ship, uh, just a little bit bigger and with a little more stuff. So in three, two, one, launch. And he's also apparently a lot <laughs> slower on the launch. I hope that doesn't affect things too much. Um... A lot of people say that in FAR, they like to have 1.1 <laughs> uh, thrust to weight ratio on the launch pad, and I was actually fairly close to that, so... I'm going to get this guy up to about, say, 100 meters per second. Maybe 75. I'm getting a little antsy here. I disabled roll on my on my things here. So with any luck, this will just get me over to a nice orbit. And now we can talk about um, fine print while we're while we're launching this guy. Um, I really like the fine print mod. I think it is absolutely awesome. And I think that okay we're. We're fine. We're all fine here. Thanks. I think it's awesome. I want to do those. I want to do those contracts. But here's the thing: I delete the science for my contracts, and Fine Print has been seeing that as invalid uh, contracts. Has been every time I delete the science from a contract after I've accepted it, Fine Print says, says, "Oh, that contract's not real," and then deletes it. And then here's the big problem: then I get the money for accepting the contract, and then I have to re-accept the contract <laughs> in order to uh, in order to do it. I'm basically getting tons of free money from from the game because of my my refusal to accept science from contracts. Um, so I uh, tell you, what, I'm turning on I'm turning on SAS because this thing's just too wobbly. Uh, so I, I decided rather than rather than have to delete the science in post or something, uh, I I have decided to oh geez yeah. It's actually better with... Whoa, 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 whoa. No, it wasn't. <laughs> I was like, it, it's better with SAS on, but I'm like, no, it's actually not better with SAS off. It's better with SAS on. Okay. We're doing fine. Everything's good. We're 
we're cruising up here. A uh, little bit lower than I want to be to be at this low level, but that's just what happens sometimes. At least we're sticking at the top of the prograde vector like I would want to be. Uh, we are going Mach 2, almost 2.5. Two uh, we are not taking these goo readings that it's telling me about here. Uh, whoo! Okay, I think we're out of the we're out of the worst of it. Problem is, is I gotta I have to get my uh, my ship up high enough that it's not going to get all that drag before I drop the before I drop these. But I've got to get my I've got to get my uh, antennae turned on pretty quick here, otherwise I'm in trouble. But we're way early, and the ship is fairly cheap. So I'm not that concerned. I'm more concerned about the fact that we're burning up in the lower atmosphere. But it seems that that's fine. Yeah, see, we can't ditch this lower stage. We're just gonna have to run out of. We're just gonna have to run out of gas. We're gonna have to try ditching this thing. Fairly low in the atmosphere. Our apoapsis is at 30 now. But we don't have the thrust to weight on the lower one. Let's see what happens. This is why we're doing this, right? We're testing things. We're going to hit the space bar now. <laughs> okay, then I'm going to hit the number one. Which should... Oh, see, yeah, it just did, I just lost my antenna here. So let's activate it. Oh, wait, I just deactivated it. Target at Kerbin. And activate it. What just happened? <laughs> I don't know what just happened, but... <laughs> I'm going to guess that's not what I wanted. Um, I don't know what blew up. Actually, it doesn't look like anything blew up. But we don't have any control because that thing's pointed straight down is the problem. So we have just lost... Uh, although it's funny that the engine shut down. You would think the engine would, would stay up. But oh well. Um, yeah, this is, a, this is a failed launch. I need a little bit more beef on the, on the bottom stage. And I also, need to, uh, I also need to do my gravity turn better. So um, tell you what, though. I think I'm going to end the episode here. We, we've had some successes. We've had some failures. Um, this guy, this guy is doomed to crash into uh, into Kerman's ocean. We'll just watch that. Yeah, no more fun contracts, or different contracts, and no more uh, debris refund. So that'll that'll make things a little bit easier going forward, anyway, because I don't have to worry about parachutes and stuff like that. And unceremoniously. Splashed into the water. So, I hope you enjoyed watching this. I definitely enjoyed playing it. Next episode, I'm going to actually launch to Duna. And assuming that goes okay, I'm, I might launch to a couple other planets as well. So, I am Fifth Horseman. And I will, as always, talk at you later.